real quick to give you a quick background, I have 37 years in the construction industry. Um, several different venues from construction management, general contracting, design build, with an emphasis on developing a residential, commercial, midstream gas, power generation, and most recently now, renewable natural gas. By the way, if anybody has any questions, I'm going through, by all means, feel free to yell them out, stop me, interrupt me, ask questions. It's the way I, I prefer to do that as I work through a, a presentation. Give you a quick about STEP. STEP Energy is a developer, primarily in the RNG market. We provide clients with a midstream solution to deliver their production gas to the marketplace. Our business model focuses on financing, ownership, and operations of pipeline infrastructure within the RNG industry. In a true midstream fashion, STEP Energy assumes the financial and technical responsibility from the RNG facility to an interconnecting transmission pipeline or the local distribution company. As a developer, we finance every phase of a project performing as an EPC. After a project is designed, procured, constructed, STEP owns, operate, and maintains these assets. Our core, core vision, our business model allows facility RNG developers to transport their gas to the marketplace at no cost that are cap X or op X. So essentially we're financing these projects for them. Okay. By removing all the financial liability and risk, ownership, compliance, and operational responsibility from the facility developers, STEP allows these producers to focus on production and developing of future assets. Everybody with me? With our expertise, capabilities, and collaboration, and a strategic approach that del delivers a turnkey renewable solution for domestic agricultural landfill and biogas clients. We assist our clients in achieving their ESG goals and position their businesses for sustained success throughout the years. What we provide, land and right-of-way acquisitions, environmental and construction permitting, design and engineering of mechanical, electrical, environmental, and civil work. We procure all material and equipment. We obviously construct these projects, and then we operate and maintain the systems in accordance with the state and federal DOT regulations and compliance required for pipelines. We provide all site safety. We provide all quality control and inspections, services, whatever's needed within a project. We achieve every phase of a project by our partnership with our subcontractors and vendors locally and throughout the country. So essentially that every phase of a project from the land acquisition through our engineering, design, and procurement and construction is done with partnerships, like I said, with uh, a lot of uh, folks that are here in this room here and a lot of folks throughout the country. This is a... Uh, quick shot of a project that uh, of a launcher skid that uh, we provide on one of our landfill projects. Um, we use these launcher skids as well as, <coughs> excuse me, as well as the receiver skids to keep compliance within the DOT. This helps us clean our lines and so forth throughout the years with everything that we do within compliance of the DOT um, and maintaining our operations and so forth. The reason I'm showing you a line here, a, a picture of our lines here is, this is our typical largest line. This is a six inch carbon steel line. All of our projects are six inch and under. And the reason they're six inches under is that helps us to keep, to keep regulated and labeling our lines from being transmission lines. Okay, so we are a non-regulated company by staying six inches on our line. A lot of our projects, you don't ever see nothing more than a six inch line here. I would say 50% of our projects are gonna be anywhere from two inch to four inch lines. And that's all depends upon the facilities 
and the clients that we're working with because upon the pressures, volumes, and so forth, the gas that they're putting out, okay? We've developed a typical design for all of our projects. So essentially, we know exactly from the start of a project to the end of a line, we know exactly what our system's gonna look like. The only thing that changes for us is gonna be the diameter of the pipe and the length of the pipeline that, that we're providing here. These are just some, uh, some components that we, we uh, include in our design. We remotely monitor and shut down a line as needed here with the, with the, uh, with the uh, meter system as well as the ESD valve. But these are the most important parts of our line. Other than that, everything is just typical design that we have, okay? You see the one state in red, obviously the only state that we will not go to. <laughs> I think a lot of people in this room would probably agree with that, but this is a business decision that most business stuff, but right now we're working in four different states, okay? Obviously we stay out of, stay out of California. Um, if we have our drillers, I'd like to stay out of the New York area, but um, our clients take us to the different states throughout the country, okay? Um, there's not a whole lot of RNG in this area here, but um, um, we welcome it, okay? Whether it's dairy farm, whether it's landfill, whether it's biogas, so that's why I was showing this last so, but California's one place, not only we won't go work, but I don't want to visit it either. Any more, qu any questions? Go ahead. You would think California, because it's renewable, would love it. They do love it out there and they have a lot of business out there. We get asked by clients all the time to go to California, but it doesn't fit our business model because the requirements to, to, to do business out there, insurance and so forth, it's not, within our, it's not within our business model. So that's why we stay out of it. But there is a lot out there as well as up north in Canada and so forth, but uh, we're happy to stay here in the States. Renewable natural gas. Why are we in the renewable natural gas? So first of all, I wanna say that we don't promote renewable energy. We don't promote the new organization, EV, the new admission and so forth. The reason that we're in the renewable natural gas industry is because it's a model that's there. It's an opportunity for business. It's right in front of us. So we've taken the opportunity, okay? I just wanna say, we all drive gas, gas vehicles, we don't drive e-vehicles. It just happens to be that it was a, it was a opportunity that was in front of us, so we've taken it. Every community in America produces waste. As the waste breaks down, it emits methane, which is a natural occurrence here. As a storable, replenishable fuel that looks and acts like natural gas, RNG provides a practical, cost-efficient, and reliable energy solution that is available every day. Hundreds of farms, businesses, and residents are already using RNG fuel. RNG projects capture the methane from existing food waste, animal manure, waste management slug, garbage, and redirects it away from the, gar from the environment, reposing it, repurposing it, I'm sorry, as a clean, green energy source. Made from matter that is already decomposing right under our, right under our feet, RNG is a product of pure innovation and ingenuity. So again, a lot of our businesses out, if you see out here in the renewable natural gas, the things that we get involved with folks are um, primarily landfill, um, a lot of dairy farms, believe it or not, we've even have a project looking at that are chicken farms. Apparently chickens crap that much. <laughs> um, a lot of biogas, food waste facilities, um, anywhere that you could think of within your, where you could uh, get methane out or a green source, that's where this, economy is going, so, and there's a lot of developers out there. I'll show you a, sl a slide later here to show some of the projects that are actually, have been going on and some that are actually active over the last couple of years. The demand for renewable energy sources is growing in volume and intensity. As global needs for clean, sustainable energy increases, so does a business of staying at the forefront of renewable energy trends, and that's essentially where STEP is at. We're trying to stay ahead of these trends as they develop, we will adapt with the trends within, as, as time goes on, essentially, that's where we will continue to move forward. More industries and markets are, are, beginning, to, are beginning the energy transition journey and implementing renewable solutions in their day-to-day -day operations to keep pace with the rapidly evolving businesses. 
it's increasing day by day. By day. Um, we have a client list right now throughout the country of large and small clients. Um, there are some clients that we have that are, that may do one or two projects a year. There are some clients that we have that can do anywhere from five, six to 10 projects a year. It is evolving and the equipment and supply chain has to evolve with it. Okay. <clears throat> some of the benefits, a clean, affordable and reliable waste derived fuel that can be used to power homes, businesses, and even vehicles. So essentially how some of these projects work that we get involved with, the clients that we work for, before they develop and build some of these facilities, they enter into agreements to sell this gas either with the utility company or with a business. For instance, the project we built uh, a year ago, the gas is being sold to GM for the next 20 years. So they have already purchased the gas. Obviously, now that they've sold that purchasing agreement, so now they build the facility and they're transporting the gas over to them. This helps, obviously, each and one of those companies lower their ESG. There's a lot of that, most of that stuff that's happening before any of these projects come to the, to the forefront to be built. Those agreements are in place. Um, we do know of some instances where there's colleges that are actually purchasing some of this gas. Um, local uh, subsidies and, um, and uh, uh, counties um, that we're aware of with some of the groups that we're talking about are actually purchasing some of this gas. So that's where the development of RNG comes from. Helping slow the impact of climate change in the near term, but also to rebuild local economies in the future. It reduces the impacts of organic waste while also fueling a greener future. Solid waste is expected to grow nearly 70% by the year 2050. The RNG industry provides an effective solution for effectively managing this waste and implementing the sources of green and reliable fuel. So there's a coalition out here by the name of Renewable Natural Gas Coalition, RNG Coalition. Um, they have some great information out there that I would suggest take a look at. They have some great statistics of what's happening in the RNG industry, where the future is going, um, let alone a lot of the developers and folks, um, manufacturers that are involved in the industry. It is growing faster than any of us can keep up with here at the top. So I would suggest looking up the RNG industry. RNG Coalition, I'm sorry. I wanted to show you this slide. This is a drone shot of a landfill project. Um, this project, you can see up front here, this facility is actually 200 foot by 400 foot. It puts out 8,000 MMBTU. And I know in our industry around here, that's trickled compared to what we get out of the, here in the midstream, right? This is actually a large RNG facility at 8,000 MMBTU. It can actually go up to 12,000, but right now it only produces 8,000 MMBTU. This, this landfill is a 1,000 acre landfill, um, and uh, it actually is their second facility that they produce here in, in, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this county here. So, so. But this is the, I wanted to show this because this shows you the, the magnitude of these projects of these facilities. Obviously, STEP, we're just a small portion of it. At the end of this, at the end of this facility um, is where our launcher skids are, and then we go off, whether it's a mile, two miles, whatever it is, to tie into the local uh, utility company transmission line that's out there. But this is the investment that a lot of the developers are putting into this project. This project here, from round numbers I understand, was between 30 and $40 million. Okay, now picture that on a large scale. There's some developers out there that we know that are, like I mentioned earlier, that are building these five, six, seven, even 10, 10, of them, 10 of them a year. This is why Step Energy was developed, by taking that CapEx for the pipeline. Small portion of it, I get it, but we're actually taking that, helping them by reducing that cost up front for having to build a pipeline. We're actually taking that, that operation cost away for them, for us owning and operating these assets throughout the years, some of that. We're actually helping them save money so that they can go out and produce more facilities. For us as a business, the more facilities that they build, the more opportunities we have to, to build pipelines and own and operate them in the long run. This is a quick shot of a process within a farm. 
obviously the waste source is a feedstock, goes through an anaerobic digestive system, which produces the biogas, by, then turns it into a renewable natural gas. All the facilities that are built and that we connect to, when that gas comes into our pipeline, it's, it's pipeline ready gas. It goes directly into the, into the, to the utility company, it goes directly to your businesses and homes. So this is just a, 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 a typical process for renewable. And again, this, a lot of this information can be found on the, re, uh, the RNG Coalition website. So this map here, I just saw it again, it was, it was being reposted this morning on LinkedIn. Um, this is as of tw the end of 2021. RNG facilities and operational, 281. Under construction, 180. Planned, 296. Almost 557 projects out there. Again, this was, this was posted at the end of 2021. Um, we're hoping to see a new, new, uh, new one come out here by the third quarter or something like that but it's growing by leaps and bounds. By 2030, the RNG production will be seven times what is forecasted in 2020 levels. By 2025, RNG production will be 27 times what it was in 2020. Give you an idea of why Step Energy is in this business. Okay, we're here for the long for the long term. So, and again, the RNG Coalition—they're the ones that that come up with these uh, statistics, and they're the ones that are into this day in and day out. So, if you're looking for more information, by all means, learn this stuff. But now you understand why we're in this industry. There's a list of some programs and resources that are out there that, again, I suggest that they get a look at. Obviously, one of the, one of the biggest one is the, uh, the uh, uh, Infrastructure Act, uh, Act, I'm sorry, um, Biogas Opportunities, um, Farm Act, all of these programs, as well as the Renewal Coalition, American Biogas Council, these are all good groups to, to not only familiar yourself with, but to be involved with when it comes to renewable energy, renewable gas, essentially. Um, some of the things that obviously we take advantage of that we talked about here this morning were the tax credits. Even as a developer, if it was a small portion of, of, uh, of the project, it's the pipeline and stuff like that, we still get opportunities to take par partake in the, uh, in the tax credits. And yes, um, somebody mentioned this morning there were 50%, as far as we know, that as of 2023, it's 40% of some of the materials that sort of that, that we use that we put in our project. And again, some it has a lot of uh, factors in it, domestic and uh, location we're using. But yes, the act is actually bringing more of the RNG into play and bringing more companies like ourselves into play because of the opportunities that are out there. It's, it's quite substantial. I mean, if you have to, everybody here that knows about pipeline work, you know, it's, uh, it's expensive, but I'll give you a quick uh, our average pipeline is probably about three miles long. Three mile pipeline, probably about five and a half, six million dollars. Forty percent of some of that material that goes into that, you know, that's the overall project and so forth. So it's a it's a good advantage to take care, take uh, uh, to take advantage of. So. <coughs> I'm sorry. So. Step Energy Holdings, again, as I, as I mentioned here at the beginning, so we're a developer, okay? We happen to be from this area. Um, obviously, I was in the midstream industry before I got into um, the RNG. Um, um, all of my business partners were in the uh, midstream as well. Um, again, it was just happened to be that it was an opportunity in front of us that we took as a business model, and that's what we're gonna continue to move forward with here. Um, as the industry changes, we'll change with it. As the industry develops and it grows, we will continue to grow and change with it. Um, and I can't, I can't stress how much of this cannot be done from our part without any of our partnerships, um, subcontractors, vendors, um, even the back of house and, and uh, business supports, insurance companies and so forth that are part of organizations here in town. That's what make Step Energy go. Um, I'd like to thank the ladies for inviting me here to speak today. Um, I know it's short and sweet. Um, unfortunately, 
I can only, only provide so much information without giving away secrets to our business here because I do have some competition in the room. <laughs> and there are some secrets that we'd like to keep. Uh, unless anybody wants to sign an NDA, then meet me out front in the lobby and I'll be in more than happy to send it so. But, but that step itself. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. Yes, it is privately held. We'll take donations. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. Correct. No, I, I, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know enough about the RINs and so forth, but I don't see it being a problem. What I see a problem being is, is that our government has created this bill, which gives us our tax credits, and um, it's very broad. So it's good or bad. Um, anybody that's in the RNG industry can take advantage of it. But they haven't, they haven't broken it down to silos. That is yet to come. And when that comes, then, you know, we'll see what happens to small players like us that are part, that are partake in, in the uh, tax credits or advantages that we can. You know, I think a lot of that stuff will be going to the developers, to the uh, landowners, the farmers. I mean, um, but hopefully here the administration doesn't take the time to break down that, that bill and it just, it, it continues to be broad and we can all take advantage of it. So, some of the advantages that are out there that I should have spoke about, but uh, for instance, um, um, farmers. Um, I'll give you an instance of a project that we're working on. A farmer has, um, what's Syracuse, 11,000 cattle? There's 11,000 cattle. Once the RNG facility comes online, which will be sometime next year, he'll be able to take advantage of the credits that he's gonna receive from that, and he'll be able to add 4,000 additional cattle to his farm. And essentially, he's doing that for free. He's got the same acreage that he's had when he started a facility, when he, when, as, as it originally started. Obviously, we're gonna build a, a facility for him where he captures all the manure and so forth, but by taking advantage of the credits and everything that's out there, everything that's provided to him, he'll be able to increase his business by adding those cattle. So those are some, so some of the advantages that are out there. And, uh, and I gotta tell you, some of, the, some of the dairy farms that we are involved with, some large ones, some very large ones throughout the, uh, throughout the country, and some small ones where it's just a farmer just happens to have the opportunity that he has that many cattle. And it's a minimum of 4,000 cattle, sir? Yeah. So to, to, to qualify for the RNG, you need a minimum of 4,000 head. Um, for RNG, uh, uh, for the manure count to be RNG. So, anything else? Yes. You uh, had on your, your process one step was the uh, biogas enhancement. And is that something, the, the biogas update, is that something that's set though? No. Okay. Yeah, so. so request, you just make it in terms of the That's correct. So we transport, that's, that's all we do. So, so we're not responsible for the gas itself. We're not uh, uh, responsible for the composition of the gas, for the volume of gas. We're essentially, we're that trucking system for, for developers. So they, they like, a lot of developers we work, work with, they like to stay in their own lane, which is develop. They don't, they don't want to operate, they don't want to transport. Quite frankly, I don't think they want to get out there, get dirty and, and have to worry about uh, land acquisition and permitting, um, environmental issues and so forth. So, yep, that's it. So when we get it, like I mentioned earlier, it's pipeline ready. It's ready to go right, right, into, uh, right into your homes and your businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is for you on behalf of ABGPA. Oh, thank you. I thank appreciate you it. Very much.